Time to clear away some projects so I can open some mail. This board has a lot of buttons on it. This first package feels like a bunch of nails. Machine pin sockets. I think I was running low on these. And they can be used as IC sockets. But I also take regular components and do that on PCBs where I need something that will hold. So if you use a regular 0.1 inch female header, it can fall right out. And when I recently made this Echo PCB, I wanted to be able to swap out some resistor values and possibly some capacitors. So I used machine sockets on a few of those parts and a lot of them were just permanently assembled where I don't expect those values to change. So I needed to make sure I had more of those on hand because I think I'll be doing some more experimenting on future boards and I don't want to run out. This one's got some weight to it and a little bit of jangliness. Lock washers in various sizes. I think I ordered these a couple of months ago. I'm not sure how to read these. It looks like maybe M5, M4. That's like a W, not an M. M6. And I don't know what that says. M10. Just a basic split lock washer. So I've needed a bunch of these. I guess this might have been an assortment kit or else these were the cheapest values for now. As I do various maintenance on certain things where bolts or screws get loose, sometimes a lock washer is needed to go back in place and help it stay secure. So restocking as things run out over the years. This one said connector. Well, I see part of a ribbon connector, I think. Just hanging out loose in the package. How did that happen? Oh, I must have cut it. It looks like it says 34 pin there. So we have a PCB side keyed and a ribbon female side. So if I have a whole bunch of pins, I need to go from one board to another or something like that. I can just get a ribbon cable and have a connector on each side and plug that in. And that can be useful for things like this old relay solenoid driver board with all of these outputs. Or more recently, this cross point switch with a whole bunch of input and outputs. I was using DuPont wires, which was very tedious. So now if I want, I can just get a ribbon cable assembly and plug that into the board to go to other things as needed. This lightweight package is supposed to be also connector. Oh, right. These are magnetic docking four pin, I think. Yeah, they have different sizes, but I thought I would try this out with four pin at first. Partly because I may try to use something like this for USB. So there's five sets on the bottom. It looks like through hole pins for a PCB. And on the other side, this one has the pads and this is spring loaded pogo pins. So the magnets allow these to dock and even maybe help auto align. So when they are brought close, they start trying to join and they auto align to the best of my ability to tell. So once they are joined, 
I can try to move them, but they'll slide back in alignment with the magnets. So I'm hoping this will help with auto connecting when I want to have, say, a stationary thing and then bring another project near and have it auto center and make USB connection and be able to deliver power and have communications between a stationary and a removable part of a project. So if that works out, I'll be ordering more of these, maybe in different amounts of pins as well. And this one is called Measurement. These are AC panel mount meters to measure voltage, current, and frequency. 20 to 500 volts, 0 to 100 hertz, and 0 to 100 amps. I got three of the same one as a test. So the Voltage terminals are on the side here. They have screws here to hook it up to AC voltage. Then there's a looks like a JST style two pin connector here, which goes to this current transformer. And it's not a split transformer, so you have to break the connection that you're trying to measure current for and run a wire through here. And maybe if you're measuring lower current, you might want to loop it around multiple times to be able to measure it. I'm not sure how good this is. So there's a couple of things I want to do. Maybe I can use this on a variac to give a digital readout of the voltage that it is set to because the one I have just has the analog needle and it's not the most accurate looking thing. But it would also be good to know an idea of the load current and there's a couple of other things as well, so I wanted several of these on hand. If they work well, maybe I'll get more. So I want to test this and see if it works. In order to vary the AC voltage to see if this thing can track it, I'll use the Variac. And at times like this, it makes it justifiable to hoard all of these old AC power cords and adapters and other things. You never know when you're going to need a spare power cord. Now if I can talk my way out of this situation, here's a 40 watt 120 volt AC light bulb. The Variac, which has two output receptacles, is just getting powered from a power bar. One of the outputs goes to the panel mount voltmeter. So it's just line and neutral going to measure voltage when we have this turned on. So right now that's off. The other output goes to this janky receptacle box here. So one of those outlets there has probes going to this AC voltmeter and the other one is going to power this light bulb. So as I change the voltage on the Variac, I should see the voltage coming straight out into this meter change and coming to this junction here, seeing the same voltage, hopefully, on this meter. And the light bulb should change its brightness as the voltage changes. And this is going to be starting out at minimum, so it takes, it says, at least 20 volts for this panel meter to start working. But the meter itself gets powered from the AC, so it's actually a little dim at first. And the current transformer is this little cable here plugged in as well. So that's going over here. And the AC powering this light bulb is looped through there three times. So it may be a little hard to see, but the AC wire goes through there three times. If we use our calculator, 40 watts divided by 120 volts is 333 milliamps. So if we triple that, we get about one amp. So three loops through the current transformer. We should see one amp when we get up to 120 volts. And turn on the AC out. So we're less than one volt, 599 millivolts. So there's just over 20 volts and the panel meter is starting to come on. And the light bulb is starting to light up. 32 volts. 50 volts. 
So the panel meter and the multimeter seem to be agreeing on the voltage. We have 60 hertz as well, but not enough current to show up on there yet. 79 to 80 volts. Now we're showing 0.7 amps. I'll just go all the way to 120. So 120 and 119 and 0 0.9 amps, close enough to the 1 amp that I'm expecting from three loops measuring 333 milliamps each. So turning it back down around 100 volts, both meters agree. 85 volts, 76, 63 ish. 47 something, 36 something, and beyond that point, this panel meter is going to start turning off anyway, so success. So now I know I can use these panel meters to measure AC voltage and current in some upcoming projects, and I'm also looking forward to these magnetic four pin connectors getting tested out in self-aligning docking projects. There's still a lot I need to work on with the connector docking projects. Then just regular restocking. Connectors, sockets, washers. As always, thanks to channel and Patreon supporters for helping make all this possible.